And I'm only doing this for the for the loyal Patreon mockers. Definitely not doing it for you bums. Bunch of bums. All right, we had a literal rendition of chapter four, Into the Deep, one of the most direct lines where they just undevelop themselves and go after the Epon. And, and uh, the loyal bump, well, Dark Mog did something, it's true, we got to give it to him. Ah, oh, abstention. We missed you tonight, abstention. We missed your presence. A lot of lot of characters. Just welcome. Just in time for the for the lecture. Now, it's funny because I, I played this Queen E2 against Kryman and I put it in the introduction. I really thought I had to defend this. And, you know, it's in the intro of my book. And then, you know, Calvin and I were talking, you know, maybe you don't need to play Queen E2. You know, Queen E2, Knight C6, I remember... I remember I had this position with Kryman, Bishop G5, F6, Rook FD1, which I, which I took an hour to play, by the way, which is totally playable, Rook FD1. And if he takes here, I was planning to play Knight G5 and Rook takes D7. Yeah, it was, it was on. But then Kryman just spent two minutes and played this and got a lost position and then anyway this was in the introduction we had this position and then I'm threatening rook d7 and everything in the face and it's over anyway he was totally totally lost uh uh yeah, I, I don't know. What, 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 did, what did he do here? Oh, yeah, he did this or something. Then I took and then played e5. He took and then we got we got this dream position. Stream shake, dream, dream shake position. Anyway, he did like rook a7, knight d5, g6, something like this. And I, I remember it was just missing mate and, and, and him saying I lost on time. I didn't have notation. We, we didn't have notation. I didn't lose on time. I just... Uh, and then here, h5. And I miss rookie 7. I miss horse mate. I mean, it's just... This is one of my nicest games when I was 18. Check here. Check. And mate. Beautiful. Beautiful finish. Anyway, this is the precursor to... To, uh, to the fact that you don't need to play queen e2 here, you just castle. And nowadays guys are playing knight c6 and trying to go for this because I showed that, that you can't go after the e-pawn and, and I'm playing bishop d5 and nice position, many crazy lines. Why? Well, I know queen e2 because after b4, blunder, it's in my book, it's known in the book. Yes, you have the book. <laughs> You know, this used to be the theory, knight eight four. And this was in the books, like this was the theory. And it was unbelievable because guys just didn't you know, people just weren't sure. They they didn't they didn't realize that that you know. So Calvin and I we were analyzing this together, uh, one of our sessions in uh, two thousand one, yeah. And then, you know, then I took it to the new mocked level, but um, this is already winning. This position is, I don't think this is accurate. In the book I argue that this position is already basically winning for white. Um, black has no development, just a bishop. White has one, two, three, four pieces. If he, if he takes here, there's, you know, there's even, there's even knight g5, there's even rookie one. This has been argued that rookie one is winning because if take here, then knight e5. So the, 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 this is even a line, and then yeah, this check. I didn't put this in the book, but I'm aware of it. And this is even this is nasty, but 
But, uh, so that's a lie, but take is, is good too. And the game with Sarkar, of course, was D6. And I argue rookie one is in the book. I argue this position is borderline winning for white. Um, which I stand by. See, the computer doesn't understand. This is in the footnotes. But with Sarkar, I played queen d4. The idea being he can't play bishop e7 because I take on g7. And after knight f6, queen takes b4. And again, bishop c8, rookie 1, bishop e7, bishop f4. Castles, rookie 7. I've had this before, even on the stream here. Bishop e7, queen e8, rookie 1. And if knight d7, bishop h4 wins the queen. All this is in the book. Uh, but uh, yeah, queen d4, knight f6, queen takes b4, queen c7. There's bishop f4, bishop g5, and bishop h6. All of these moves are winning. Bishop h6 is, well, I don't know about winning, but bishop h6 is even, is even good. Bishop g5 is the most winning. But like I've said before, you, you could even play bishop h6 and have an advantage. That's how bad black's position is. Anyway, I played bishop f4. Uh, if bishop e7, rook c1, queen d, queen d7, and bishop a4. Uh, you know, and if, and if he does a5, we pick up pieces. Uh, so yeah, with the Sarkar game, you guys know what happened, right? Knight d7, rook e1, check. If bishop e7, bishop takes d6. Uh, uh, king d8. Rook c1, and obviously if knight c5, rook takes c5. If he takes, we take with check. Queen takes, we take here, and we're all over him. He's totally crushed. Uh, you must have only seen the YouTube. The YouTube is a joke. It's not to be taken. The YouTube is a satire. Okay, queen c7. Bishop f4, knight d7, uh, rook e1, yeah, king d8, and again, once the king gets cut off like this, you know, people didn't believe this game, they, they, they thought it was like, you know, some sort of, uh, you know, not really witchcraft or something, like not, you know, but it's just, it's pure dynamic chess, you know, two rooks, I mean, again, the rooks, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14. 14 squares for the rook. Zero, you know, one, no activity for these rooks. It's just a piece, king in the middle. Every, I mean, obviously white's winning, but you know, people, they're stuck with their ways, they're up a piece. Well, that doesn't matter, because now, you don't have to move the queen, just knight g5, double ex double exclamp. And he resigned. Because knight f7 is threatening mate, and if he plays knight e5, then we win the queen. If he plays bishop e7, of course, yes. We could, you know, take the rook, do all this, you know, do do many things, take here. But uh But the best my favorite move, of course, you can play bishop d6 and then do it like this if you want and just take everything but of course I, I I always I really I just love this move and I love showing this move and I'll always love showing this move because there's something really special about a move like Queen takes d6 literally the ultimate in the face move Queen takes d6 of course this is mate and and if he takes here then Bishop takes d6 and of course this is mate and if he tries to defend himself, then he self-mates himself. So, you know, I wrote an article on this uh, back in 2008 when I played the game. But now, on to the game with Grandmaster Speets. He, he didn't know this game. He didn't know it. And, you know, if you, you're, you're playing, and you probably should have a, a decent, some defense against the Mora. I mean, they just don't see it. They just don't see other pro players playing it and, and it's surprising that he, he went into this so that's d6 uh, and then there's bishop d6 the bishop d6 is interesting but 
Yeah, it's a serious problem for, for, for Black, unless he knows all the moves. Um, and Smith's played the obvious move, knight e7, which we'll talk about, which loses by force. It doesn't look like it should lose by force. But again, this pawn on d5, and when I talk about this position, when I'm lecturing it with real pieces, I'll just remove these pieces. Because this pawn on d5 dominates the entire queen side. You might as well get rid of these pieces for now. You have several moves where these pieces don't play. Now, black can try and unravel with a5, but you... If you give him, don't give him time, there, there, there are no, no moves for him. So, so let's say he plays king f8, which is the best move. And now this move is a beautiful one, queen d4. It taught me a lot about chess. Queen d4, I've, I've lectured on this several times. Um, this bishop is dominated. So, yes, a5 is the only move. And in the book I discuss this position. Bishop g5, knight f6 is playable. If they play f6, then it gets pretty murky, and we get lines with like rook c6 and some variations. And you can see that white's already winning. Um, knight f6 is, is complicated, and then there's knight d2 with a wild, uh, wild position. Anyway, um, if they try queen f6, which is the interesting lines, you would like to play queen b6. To hit this bishop, but if you do that, you lose your queen. Right? So that's why you play knight e5. At knight e5, I remember Ribka 3 gave it 0 back in 2008, and then if you work it a little, it realized it were it, it, it were it realized, uh, uh, yeah, that's an interesting comment, but uh, it's accurate about the bishop, by the way. It just Right, Dark Mock, it's accurate about the bishop, it just didn't pass the moderators. But uh, knight e5, threatening queen b6. Right? So if he plays knight e7, you just play queen b6. I love this move. I love this move because the bishop is gone. And if he plays bishop c8, it's just made. It's, it's just made. Uh... Which is hilarious. So, so knight e5. And if he takes here, then we get the checkers variation. Check. And pick up the bishop. And win the rook. Wins. Now, if he plays bishop e7. Now, we have a number of moves. I mean, I would imagine we could just play d6 and win, right? Yeah, I mean, d6 is winning easily. But I was very impressed, see this is winning, but I was very impressed by this move when analyzing d6, but yeah, this is just an amazing move. Bishop g5 is gratuitous, gratuitous mock. If he takes here, queen b6 again, and he can never open this bishop because then everything is, is shattered. And then rook c1, and again, he can't move anything. This is threatening mate, and if he plays knight c6, then this bishop opens up again, and he's totally lost. So this is why, I like, I remember lecturing on this. So bishop g5, and if queen d6, of course, there's a force variation where his king is dragged out to a5. And then you end up taking the bishop on, on b7. This was all in my notes before the, the book, of course. And we, we take here first, or we could take here first, but we just take here first. If queen takes, of course, d6 is winning. Or, again, queen b6. And if he plays d6, then knight g6. Um, yeah, knight g6 is winning. I mean, we could also do this, but... So, so knight takes, and now knight f7. Excellent. Knight f7. Working the bishop. Is that, there are other moves, but I, I like knight f7 the best. Check. If queen takes, win the queen. King takes, check. Check. And here. Now, yes, he could play knight c6, but then just take here and we're, we're you know, we're winning completely up 10 pawns. All right. But that would be the best defense. But, but this is a very beautiful line. Check here. King b5, check. And now... Forget the mate, let's talk about this line. Very 
colorful variation. This is a B mate, like this, and uh, yeah, uh, check, take check, and this is what I'm talking about. We pick up, we pick up this bishop, and and it's not just force made variations. I want I want to show the the most instructive variations We're featuring this d5 pawn, check, and then, and so this is the main idea of the knight d5 sacrifice to shut down to wedge the black position and shut it down completely okay and that's that's really the point of one of the main points of, of the of my book is to, to showcase this knight d5 all over the place and if, if you you're not ready to play knight d5 then you really can't play the mora at a high level at all because you're just never going to be able to take the chances that you need you know, there are always going to be positions where knight d5 is called for. And if you're not willing to take those chances, like, let's take this position, for example, queen c7. Well, the right move, in my view, is knight d5. And if you're not willing to, to take the chance here, you see now the computer sees that it's the right move. And, you know, and now it's going up. And, you know, if knight e7, bishop b3, I don't, you know, d6, rook e1... You're you're down uh, you're down a piece, but I don't buy that evaluation at all. See, it goes down. Yeah, you're down a piece, but it's it's very. I don't buy that. It's very. Uh, you know. I mean, black can't move, so so you have to be willing to to go for these lines. Now, again, another beautiful line before we get to. Uh, uh, the game is, and I always like showing this variation, knight f6, and now we have this vulnerable f5 square, so it's over. This bishop is shut down, there's no bishop c8, there's no d6, this square is gone, knight h4. I mean, these lines taught me a lot about chess, because knight f5 is coming. Yeah, I mean, he could suffer on like this, but this is, this is just the rook down now. This is just a rook down, and then you lose the rook, so. Or you could just take like this, and it's just, it's completely over. Again, the knight is, but anyway, most guys, and I've had this before, they, they, they fall for Morphe's mate, queen c7, and then we get the beautiful, and you know, it'll shock a lot of guys, but queen c7, queen takes f6, it's, it's just spectacular finish. Queen takes f6 with the idea of Bishop H6. And obviously, if G6 it's mate, check, check, and mate. Oh, uh, no, no, the, 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 he, he needed to uh, save up for some more Tesla, he said. Queen C, knight, knight H4, Queen C7, Queen takes F6, and uh, take. Check and me. Okay, so the, you know the, these are really special variations. Now to the game with uh, Grandmaster Smeets. He fell into this, and you know it, it looks like after rookie one knight e7 is good because he's getting castled. But the problem is he's still cut off. All these pieces are destroyed, and now knight g5 just wins. Well, it's surprising that you would say it just wins. Because if he plays h6, again, we could play queen h5 if we want to. And if he plays g6, again, he, he can't move anything. Queen h4 is among is among the winning moves with knight e4. He still can't move anything. And it's just, there are many, many moves. I mean, this is one uh, completely winning. This is another threatening mate, by the way. Um, and apparently, this is like winning a queen. Check. Wins the queen, right? Because well, this is mate. Yeah, so there, there, are many, there are many moves that are winning, but 
I, I remember that this was Quinn in two in my book, 94, but, but Quinn h5, yeah. So, you know, if he plays Queen c7, then Queen h5. Uh, g6, Queen h6. He can't castle. It's over. He can't move. You know? Oh, really? f6 and you won with Bishop f4? Yeah, I guess they weren't using a computer. That's nice. d6. This is over. And if he does this, it's just, it's just over completely. Right? So, uh... So, yeah. So, knight e7. And it looks like he's getting castled, but he has no defense. Queen h5. One, two, three, four, five pieces attacking the king. And, you know, it looks like nothing. And then you play knight e4. And the game is over. I mean, this, you know, this really showed me just how powerful this sacrifice was. Yeah. It's not Kasparov's rule. It's Capo, Capo Blanca said you need at least three pieces. That was Capo Blanca's rule. So here we have five. Plus... This is a piece, so six. One, two, three, four, five, six. And this pawn is a hook. It's weak. Bishop h6, so game is over. This is hanging. So, okay, if he does this, the main line in my book is take. Check. Here, queen e5. And bishop g5 threatening knight f6. Everything is winning. Of course. So... That's when the computer in 2007 realized that this was lost. It didn't realize it when it played 97. Nowadays, the computers are stronger. So you needed, back then, you needed to show the computer up to this point, and then it realized that it was losing. Nowadays, they, they understand it better. So bishop h6, and it's over. There are a lot of lines. Like, take, take here, threatening, threatening mate. Here, here. Uh... Yeah, and then this, and then there's like knight f7, there's also rook e7, I mean I'm sure that rook e7 is, is on, has got to be mate too, yeah, but anyway, this is, this is more mate, and then this, take, and then check, and then mate. I mean, I love it. these lines are very instructive. Right, check. And then mate. Uh, yeah, so take. Check. And then you mate. Literally in the face. Check. Very beautiful lines. So that's what, you know, Smeets was up against in a three minute game. And if you, if you don't know it, you, you really don't have any chance. So obviously, Bishop takes h6. And if, again, if he takes here, take, and, uh, well, f6, queen g6, and left the rook, mate. If f5, then knight g5, uh, threatening mate. If rook f7, queen g6, okay. check. And if this, check and mate. No, not on the board. I, I, I did a lot of it on, on the computer, too, but I, or I did it in my mind. I mean, some of them I analyzed on the board, but sometimes I was working with the computer when I did. did. I mean, I, I have my file on the board was like 500 pages of analysis before I wrote the book. It's like a, if you scroll, if I, one day I'll show you guys, if you scroll through the file, if you hit page down, it takes like 20 minutes. If you hit page down, it takes like 20 minutes to go through it. Yeah, but I just... I enjoyed doing it back then. It was it was fun for me. Almost not fun, but it was it was just like I was running like experiments, basically. I was running like a, a, a experiments in the position. Okay, so take. Yeah, it's like 20, 20 pages. Yeah, 20, 20 minutes of page down. Hundreds of pages. Yeah, but not only on that opening, on, on many openings. So, uh, so yeah, so knight e4 and bishop h6, f5. Queen g6, threatening mate. And again, if if rook f7, knight g5. And it's mate. Um, yeah, I mean, this is mate too. Uh, There's no moves, I mean. This is mate. 
Everything is made. Uh, so yeah, so he played this, king h1. Uh, and then king h1. Obviously, we don't take because he has queen h4. You don't want to do that. It's obviously actually still mate. Hilariously. Uh, I didn't uh, see why this one was mate. What am I missing? I guess discoveries. Knight f6? Yeah, I saw knight f6. Ah, uh, then rook e8. Wow. <laughs> what a what a mate. Can you imagine? <laughs> I saw knight f6 and uh, I, yeah, and, and, and d6 and mate. But but yeah, but look at this mate. Oh wow! I mean, th that is that has got to be that has got to be the nicest one of the nicest ones. I mean, the Arabian made out of nowhere. <laughs> yeah. So, uh, so I, I could have taken it as a mock. I could have actually taken it. Yeah, could have actually taken it. And then uh, knight f six. Obviously, can't take because check mate. And so this, and then rook e eight, and then mate. But Anyway, I played King H1, of course. It's a better move, King H1. And he resigned. And he resigned because because it's mate everywhere. D6, King H8, and... Um, well, I can play Bishop G7 now. You know, always look for the forcing. You could do this, but, you know, always look for the forcing. Bishop G7, and check. And again, you see this monster bishop in all the variations. This bishop is just raking the position. This is the key, the key bishop. It's just, it's just doing the damage. And that's why this e6 defense is blunting the bishop. But after b4, knight d5, now this bishop is coming to life. And it's a combination of three factors. One, the e-file. Opening it up, the king is many moves away from castling. Two, his pawn on d5 is dominating the position, destroying the queen side, separating black's position. And three, this bishop on b3 will become very powerful, especially when you can play the move d6 or when this opens up. So this pawn is worth, I don't know, the rook, knight, and bishop. Bring on the education. So, you know. It's worth everything, so. I have to do the lecture, even though you're a bunch of bums. So thanks for that. And let's move on.